The way your player object works is one of the most important parts of your game. It's how the player interacts with the world and is absolutely crucial to get right. Today, I'll be covering how I made my game's player easy to use and navigate with, as well as some of the tricks game developers use to make the player feel more in control of the action. Hey everyone, my name is Skit, and recently, I began working on a video game. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you play as this guy right here. They're the player character, and the first thing that I programmed for my game. The player is given four main traversal moves to work with, the run, the jump, the roll, and the cling. The run and jump are pretty self-explanatory. The roll and cling are a bit more complicated. Rolling serves two main purposes, one, to get under low ceilings, as it makes your hitbox smaller, and two, to dodge enemy attacks. It's also a bit faster than running, so if you really want, you can chain rolls together to move from point A to point B faster. Clinging serves as a way of getting some extra height. By default, the player can only jump three tiles upwards, which is about the same as their own height, but if you're able to get close enough to the edge of a high up platform, you'll automatically grab onto it. From here, you can jump again to reach the platform that you just grabbed. These four moves make a fairly diverse traveling system. It's easy to wrap your head around, but complex enough that it's not going to get too boring. There's some more we can do with these moves though, to make the player's experience a bit more enjoyable. We can add some small, hidden mechanics that give the player a bit more leniency. Let's take a look at a game from 2018 that handles these hidden mechanics expertly, Celeste. Celeste has a ton of hidden mechanics. In fact, Maddie Thorson, one of Celeste's lead developers, outlined about 10 of these mechanics in a Twitter thread. The link will be in the description below in case you want to read these for yourself, because while they're cool, I won't cover all of them in this video. The ones I'm taking and using in my own game are Coyote Time and Jump Buffering. Coyote Time allows the player to jump a little bit after they've left the platform. This allows the player to be a bit late on the button press, but not feel cheated by the system. Jump Buffering, on the other hand, is like the opposite to Coyote Time. If the player jumps before they're on a platform, the jump will be stored for a short period of time. If the player lands during this time, they'll jump automatically. This means that pressing jump right before hitting a platform doesn't make the game feel unresponsive and unsatisfying. These might not sound like they'd make much of a difference, but believe me, they absolutely do. And you might be thinking, Skit, you're making a beat-em-up game. Why do you care so much about the platforming stuff if that's not the main focus? To that I say, it's just more reason to make the platforming more forgiving. In a game where you're trying to kill enemies, it's nice to not have to become frustrated at the game for just missing a button press. But since you've brought it up, let's talk about the fighting mechanics of my game. I've got three main attacks planned for the player to use. The first is the slash. This is a medium range attack that does a fair bit of knockback and damage. It's a good all-rounder. The second is the kick. This has bigger range and much more knockback, but not nearly as much damage. It'll come in handy if you're cornered and in a pinch. I don't actually have a third attack planned just yet. I know I want it to deal a fair amount of damage and have a low amount of knockback, but that's about all. I'm open to suggestions though, so if you have any, feel free to comment them below. I spent most of my time this week getting the player to move around, so there's only one attack right now. And yes, the player will have attack animations, I just need to get around to that part. In order to test that the fighting works, I added a dummy. You can hit it and knock its head off, but that's about all. It's not very satisfying to say the least. Needless to say, the combat is a pretty big work in progress. I want to take the time to get it feeling really satisfying, and a week wasn't really enough to do that. Next devlog though, I'll definitely have something cool to show. Other than the new fighting mechanics, I'm hoping to spend the next month or so getting some enemies set up. I also want to start making the first level, though I won't go too crazy with it because it's going to be changing a lot as things go. But hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? In order to give me time to actually make decent progress on the game, I'll be uploading once every two weeks now, instead of weekly like I have been. If you want to see things sooner, feel free to check out my Twitter. I'll be posting progress on the game over there every now and again, as well as some other stuff, so if that interests you, the link will be in the description. I know this was a shorter video this time, but hopefully the new schedule will give me more to talk about. If you enjoyed the video anyways, feel free to drop a like. If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe, or check out this video right here. It helps the channel out a ton, and it won't cost you a cent. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.